So hello everyone. Um, I'm glad to present my research paper on the annual research symposium 2021, which is called an updated quantitative approach to tactical asset allocation, the value of momentum investing. The paper is done by Eugene Kravchenko and with the help of my mentor, the director of CCTF Finance Honors Program, Justin M. Shea. So the research is based on exploring the idea of the importance of momentum investing using quantitative approach to tactical asset allocation. In our paper, we continue the work of famous author, Mabel Faber, and his paper, Quantitative Approach to Tactical Asset Allocation by refactoring and updating the R code to identify how five global assets performed during high volatility market of the COVID-19 period. So we decided to explore the idea of momentum trading using quantitative approach because of the recent market move during COVID-19. For instance, on March 9th, the S&P 500 collapsed 7% in five minutes after opening the exchange. The Dow Jones industrial average fell 7.8% on February 27, and the 30-year US Treasury securities dropped below 1%, setting the new record high. One of the most important features of the portfolio construction is to reduce the risk. In our research, we will apply the Faber strategy and backtest the momentum strategy during the COVID-19 timeframe and demonstrate how it can be helpful to avoid massive drawdowns while still being profitable. So in times with record market volatility, as we experienced during COVID-19, especially in March, 2020, the momentum investing outperforms value investing because mainly by avoiding huge losses, not related with company perspective, but rather coming from the economic condition. In the Faber's paper, the author demonstrates the timeline of 1990 to 2012. And even though there are a few drawdowns in his graph, the indexes still remain positive. In our paper, we construct the performance of the market from 2013 to 2019 to see how the assets perform during economic expansion. And then we'll take a close look by plotting global assets during 2020 market, which is characterized by high volatility. We we'll then statistically analyze the performance of each of the five global asset classes and demonstrate why momentum investing has better risk adjusted returns than value investing. So for our paper, we use five asset classes and show their return from 12, 2013 until 2019 and from 2020 until 2021 to analyze the exposure of COVID-19 to the world market. All data is used in a paper is taken from Bloomberg and includes dividends and income. So for our paper, we take five major global classes. The first one is your U.S. large cap S&P 500, which includes 500 leading companies and captures around 80% coverage of available markets. The second index is FNCO. It's a composite index. It's a free float adjusted market capitalization weighted index that includes all tax qualified rates listed in the NUSE, Amex, and NASDAQ. The third one is the Bloomberg Backless U.S. Government 10 years return index, BSE. 40. And then we have a commodity index, SPG SCI. It's a leading measure of general price movements and inflation in the world economy. It provides investors with a benchmark for investment performance and in the commodity markets. The last one is MXEA. It's a free float weighted equity index, just like FNCO, but it covers but it covers countries in Europe, Australia, Israel, and the Far East. As Markowitz said, portfolio affects risk more than the return, thus it makes more sense to observe the global assets which can be included to a portfolio to protect it from unsystematic risk. In the first figure, we can see that in the time of economic expansion, which happened from 2013 to 2019, all the indexes performed really well, and especially the S&P SPX index, which outperformed others by far, showing almost 150% return. The most stable index among our group was the government bond. Even though it didn't have any extra returns, 
but the main thing here is that it avoided any major losses. In the, at the figure two, we have the performance of global assets during highly volatile markets and what some might call an economic shift of cycles. From the chart, we can notice that all global indexes, except the government bond, had a huge drawdown in March 2020. SPX and MXEA were able to recover and finish strong, having total annualized return of 13.3% and 6% respectively, while FNCO and SPGSCI resulted in negative 2.4 and only 0.8% return respectively. The US government return index had 3.43 annualized return, but what's more important is that it had the lowest standard deviation of 6.7% only, which made it a safe investment. Here from the table, we can see that the most volatile asset class was FNCO, which had annualized standard deviation of 40.2, which is highly risky during high volatile times. The rule of thumb states that risky asset classes have sharp ratio around 0.2, while a diversified portfolio is around 0.4. From the figure three, we can see that FNCO and SPGSDI have the lowest sharp ratio of minus 0.06 and 0.02, along with the highest worst drawdowns during the period of COVID-19 of 46.1 and 51.4%. The government index has the highest sharp ratio and the lowest drawdown of only 7.8%, while the SPX index had a 36% decline. For our trading strategy, we'll have a buy rule when the price of the index is more than 200 days simple moving average and sell, and sell when the index moves below the 200 simple moving average. In the stable economic time, the lines will be more aligned than we see in the graph. But it is our interest to look closely at the 2020-2021 timeline to analyze how following the simple moving average was a better way to manage risk and avoid a huge drawdown in March. We're using the simple moving average of 200 days because it's one of the best indicators to reduce the noise in the market. So we'll first demonstrate how each asset class performed you separately if we were to follow the buy and sell rules we discussed prior from 1999 until current, until current date. And then we'll take a look at how the returns would look in the context of an investor's portfolio. So in the figure five, we see the MXEA index performance since 1999 until 2020. The green line is a simple moving average of MXEA for 200 days. When the unit goes above the simple moving average, we enter in the long position. And when it goes below, we enter in the short position. So basically we enter, we exit our long position and move to the cash position. This is especially evident to observe the last years in the chart where we can see that when the market crash happened during March, 2020, when the index was taking a huge loss our position was almost instantly closed. I didn't suffer any significant drawbacks. And when the index returned and crossed the simple moving average 200 days right here, we entered a long position and realized all the gains from the growing market environment. Speaking about the commodity index performance, we can observe a few situations where the momentum strategy avoided massive drawdowns so the first one happened in October 2008 market crash. And based on the rule we said the position was closed at 600 and the massive loss of more than 50% was avoided. During 2014 drop, our strategy also played safe and didn't encounter any major losses. Finally, in March 2020 crash, the position was closed at around 380 and avoided any downside, which almost reached 200. So with an SPX index, which belongs to S&P 500, it is less volatile as it, it has, as it has performance of 500 companies. And we can see that our strategy has less trades, but also impressive zero drawdowns, which means that it was the safest way to invest the money. 
The only example where our strategy avoided a significant loss happened in March 2020, where we exited at 44.30 and got back at 44.80. And we avoided all the drawdowns until 3,400. The performance of the government bond index, as we discussed previously, showed a very safe and stable return. The important thing to point out here is that our portfolio entered a long position in the middle of 2018 and collected all the gains until it exited the market in September 2020. In the timing performance figure, we can see the results of our portfolio when we combine the five global assets with equal weighting. During the March 2020 drawdown, our portfolio avoids any major losses and ends up having 5.3 positive Return, positive percent results. But again, it's not about the return, but it's about avoiding a risk. And from this figure, we can clearly see that our portfolio was a way, a way safer return. In the table, we can see that the standard deviation is two times lower, which means we have completed our goal of reducing the risk on the, of the portfolio. Furthermore, it is evident to look at the worst drawdown, which is only about 5%. The importance of momentum investing can be undervalued, especially during times with high market volatility. Our results prove that by implementing a technical asset allocation approach to a portfolio construction, and by following the momentum strategy, we can avoid major market drawdowns and reduce the risk. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them as you can leave your comments under the video. Thank you and take care.